All right, so this is a video that sort of wraps up um, just a after action report, I guess, if you will, for the totality of the NRA Law Enforcement Firearms Instructor course for Tactical Shooting Instructor. Um, in this video, what I kind of want to do, and I want to keep it as brief as possible, is I just want to discuss the various drills, the outline of the course, kind of what we cover, and the various drills that we cover. And the reason I'm doing this is twofold. One, I think it may just be interesting information for those of you out here that are curious at, about what, what topics are hit hard at the law enforcement level in terms of training for instructors. And it kind of gives you an idea of what, what we go out there into the field and then train officers on. And also, for those of you that may be out there searching for information about this particular school, it gives you some idea of what you might want to brush up on in terms of your instructing ability and obviously your own personal performance in these topics. So uh, what I'm going to do is kind of start out uh, with, I've got the, the daily shooting schedule for the course, and then I've got the, what we uh, call the proficiency assessment and drill completion sheet. And this is just what we are all coached, aim coach on, and we have to demonstrate proficiency and the ability to do and to, to coach these things. So day one started on Monday with an orientation. And we rolled right into a review of handgun marksmanship and handling. You know, once again, we're expected to, to know this stuff at a high level going into these courses, but they do need to see with their own eyeballs that we didn't fake the funk on paperwork and show up not knowing what we're doing. Um, we went through coaching and farm safety and how, how, how the safety rules apply from a coach's perspective, and that's more the one-on-one -on -one, uh, coaching uh, methodology in these schools where you pair up and, and you coach each other on these various tactics. We took a lunch and then we came back after lunch and we covered uh, handgun range work. We reviewed the handgun fundamentals, malfunctions, trigger control, trigger reset, flash sight fire, two shot draws, 21 foot reaction drill, shoot and move with the handgun, challenge command, so giving challenges uh, upon weapon presentations, speed reloads, uh, multiple target, and then the vice president's drill. So uh, that'll roll us over here to day one with a the handgun. These are, these are the dry fire stuff that we did, uh, with both with primary and supported hand shooting, standing and shooting stance, pretty basic stuff there, obviously, the four-step draw. The NRA law enforcement uh, division teaches it what they call a four-step draw, four-count draw. Same thing I learned in the Marine Corps that we called a five-step draw. In the Marine Corps, it's one, you grip, grab the weapon, one, two, three, four, and five is your presentation. That's the five-step draw. The four-step draw is the same thing, but they, they, they think of it like this. One, two, three, actually, I'm sorry. One, two, is both of these movements, then four, and five. So Marine Corps way, I have a, I'm untraining myself here. One, two, three, four, five. NRA law enforcement. One, two, three, four. So they're just blending uh, two and three in their methodology, and then obviously doing that uh, strong hand and support hand. <clears throat> then we went into um, grip, holstering, that kind of stuff. Once again, all this is primary and support hand. Combat follow through, down and scan, so acquiring that front sight after your, your last uh, intentional shot, and then do whatever scanning procedure you have to do to say situation aware. Talked about the ready position, you know, and the Marine Corps is alert to the dirt, high ready, and then on target. And there's also the high ready position, and the high ready, you see a lot of people talking about, you know, should, and I'm just showing this with a handgun because this is what I've got here, but, you know, should, should I be ready like this? Not this Charlie's Angels garbage, but it should be high ready like this or some sort of position sool, low ready. Um, and it really depends on the environment and, and where people are and aren't and, and where you're at. So um, <clears throat> loading and unloading, tactical reloading, immediate action, tap rack radio. They don't like us saying tap rack bang because as instructors, it, we may be putting it in the idea that as soon as you do that malfunction, you're going to fire again. And the situation may dictate that that's not appropriate. And then we did feedway clearances. And then we went into live fire, trigger reset drills, flash sight fire. For those of you who don't know what flash sight fire is, as you're bringing a weapon up into your 
and either out from a draw or up from a ready position as soon as you become aware as you look at the target that that front sight is now visible you break to the trigger and start uh, dropping that shot and theoretically by the time your brain can process that drop into the trigger and engaging the trigger you've moved up high center mass with a flash sight fire two shot draw drill uh, 21 foot reaction drill demo and then shoot move and communicate we went through challenge commands with live fire speed reloading drills and then the vice president variant drill so what we did uh, I believe we did it at 10 yards uh, you're actually facing the target you've got three targets we draw and fire one two one two one two and then a combat reload or speed reload where the magazine hits the deck retrieving a spare magazine or you know whatever you're doing rack and actually you kind of use my, my offhand thumb to to manipulate the slide release back on target one two one two one two from duty holsters and all that kind of stuff uh, my time on that was a seven eight one which was good for a win in the class uh, day two rolled over to Tuesday we reviewed day one's training uh, and knocked out the proficiency sheet we reviewed long gun marksmanship and handling uh, once again expected to do this kind of stuff for a living but they want to see that we know what we're talking about <clears throat> NRA programs they talked about instructor applications some administrative stuff I came back from lunch and did long run range work range work so long gun long gun handling fundamental stance check trigger reset long gun to handgun transitions shoulder transitions um, we're going to talk about shoulder transitions if you're a right-handed shooter and then you need to find yourself on the left side you know how would you do that and there's there's multiple ways to do that my, my way is to go and i'm typically carrying a single point sling so this is pretty easy to do rock shoulders replace grip come in the pistol guard and if I don't have an ambi selector I keep my left thumb on the left side of the pistol grip so we did all that <clears throat> um, position shooting so various positioning different kneeling different sitting prone supine that kind of stuff body armor talking about how to how to present body armor to the threat depending on where you are in the environment if possible how to shoulder and swap and do all that kind of stuff considering your body armor and then we worked on multiple target drills uh, and so some of the proficiency stuff that we were coaching and then demonstrating standing shooting stance shoulder ready position combat follow through down and scan same thing we do with the, the handgun but then doing it with the rifle safety circle and high tuck you know where you position these the weapon if you're in in sort of a between engagements or just after an engagement position slinging unslinging loading unloading cruiser safe for those of you not in the law enforcement world cruiser safe uh, in it for a rifle would be magazine inserted bolt forward empty chamber weapon on safe and the Marine Corps we call that condition three and that's how the weapon is to be transported in a uh, um, a vehicle what you know while you're between stops or in route somewhere uh, where was I at uh, loading to and chambering and returning to cruiser safe speed reloading tactical reloading immediate action tap rack ready feed rate clearance trigger reset so you'll see that there's a lot of redundancy between what we're training with handguns and, sh and, and, and patrol rifles or long guns <clears throat> and then and all that what we're talking about there is, is, is dry and then we go back to live fire and then conduct uh, you know most of all that stuff all that stuff uh, with multiple drills in the uh, live fire drill stance check drill trigger reset rifle zero check drill Rifle to handgun transition, shoulder to shoulder transition, bot shooting positions, walk down drills. You know, we start at 50 yards, engage. Um, let's say we start at 50 yards, and you got uh, you're walking from the 50 yards to 25 yards. And when you when you start moving on the line, you have to engage the target five times between the 25 yards and the 15. And everybody gets on line. We do the same thing from 15 um, to 10, I believe it is, and then 10 to seven, seven to five five to three with five rounds while moving between each one of those distances and then reloading as appropriate on the move. <clears throat> what else? Body armor, multiple targets, you know, doing that stuff live. <clears throat> and then we get to day three, which was Wednesday. Review day two, you're gonna hear this every time, to complete proficiency assessment. Review of use of cover and concealment. Review of reduced light training, so we just cover what we're gonna be doing in reduced light training. Handgun range work, safety circle, one hand shooting, 
right and left handed one on one reaction drills. That's basically, and this was a really interesting drill where we'd pair up in, in, in pairs and you'd have a guy over here and a guy right here and we're at various diff distances, three, five, seven, ten 10 yards. And so let's say the shooter on the right would be at the low ready position, either handgun or rifle. Um, and, and typically it was with handgun. So he's at the low ready and with this peripheral vision, the other guy's holstered up. So I'm holstered, this guy's at the low ready. And whenever I want to, I draw to engage the target and as soon as he perceives my movement, he comes up and engages the target from the low ready, trying to show that it's really hard to outdraw a trigger pull. Now, uh, some of us practice drawing more than others, and there, there were times, frequently actually, where you know I'm, I'm beating the guy, and I'm not the only one that did it. This isn't about me. It's just teaching the principles here. Where I, the guy's at the low ready and I'm hitting the target before he hits his target. So that isn't to say that you can outdraw a trigger pull because in the real world, if we were facing each other doing that, we both walk away shot. That's not a win for either one of us. Um, but you got you to practice the draw. And I think on the law enforcement side, one of the reasons I was probably a little better with my draw times is that they are so used to felony stops and high risk pursuits and they get out of the vehicle and immediately go to the handgun or they're clearing a building they have the handgun in their hand and in the private world being on defense you know we don't have that luxury as often as as um, public officers do so we're, we're our reaction times really honestly have to be faster for us to have the same fighting chance so really really getting those draw times down is beneficial um, so that, that's an interesting drill and it's a way to simulate almost like a, a, a shootout or if you will a, uh, you know walk 10 paces and turn around and shoot at each other and, and it, to do that um, and simulate that with each one of you shooting at a target uh, is, is pretty interesting. Uh, where were we at? One on one reaction drills, went to lunch, handgun range work, when we got back from lunch pivot shooting, shooting from pivoting positions you know right and left handed and around different size barricades up down low and all that kind of stuff handgun shooting on the move contact distance shooting evade draw fire use of cover drill contact and cover drills um, <clears throat> in day three handgun rifle we went live on these specific drills there's lots of stuff in addition to what we're, what we're covering on the sheet uh, but safety circle stuff, one hand shooting, static and victim control, uh, one on one reaction drill, which we talked about, pivot shooting, handgun and rifle, shooting on the move with a handgun like we did in the rifle the day prior, contact distance, shoot and evade, and contact and cover drill. Roll over to day four, uh, Thursday, review of day three training once again, long gun range work, long gun shooting on the move, lateral movement drill, cover to cover, patrol team movement, multiple target perimeter drills long gun speed and accuracy drill and then we do the vice president with the rifles um, like we did with the pistols the day prior went to lunch came back start covering handgun and long gun unusual shooting positions using chairs we simulated airline type stuff uh, talked about that it even covered being off duty or concealed carry at a restaurant and how to manipulate the table and chairs and get people behind you and find uh, the proper angle to get to to address the threat and then get to cover or concealment and then ground drills went to uh, went to dinner and came back and did night fire stuff handgun and long gun incapacitation we actually didn't do that that day that was we did that the final day where you're you know it's all um, you know we use snap caps and stuff inside a classroom but completely immobilizing one arm and manipulating all the all the failure drills all the all the stuff that we have to do uh, reloading and, and addressing failures and then going weak hand and doing that and I'm telling you locking the bolt to the rear and doing a double feed with only your left hand is an interesting prospect if you don't try train it very often and there were some some people that obviously think that's the first time they've done that in the class even at that level and then we did reduced light range work handgun and long gun flashlight techniques long gun shoot and move handgun patrol team lateral drill long gun pivot and advance drill long gun critical function drill cover drill aided and unaided handgun shooting blinding drill that's where they shine a flashlight in your face and and they got, basically everybody lines up your face down a target and, and the and instructors walk from each corner blinding you in the face with you know 500 to a thousand lumen flashlight and as soon as you can perceive the target you're allowed to shoot and you can kind of hear that delay as people start to to come back from that light blindness and, and engage the target and then you do that again being able to use either a handheld or a weapon mounted light depending on your platform 
uh, and you see how much faster you're able to overcome that night blindness if you have your own white light yourself. Huh. Handgun critical function drill. So roll over to uh, day four over here, shooting on the move, cover drill, shooting to cover, shooting around cover, withdrawing to cover, lateral movement, uh, cover to cover, patrol team movement, moving in pairs, that kind of thing from, you know, bouncing from cover to cover, that kind of stuff. Multiple target perimeter drill. And then we did the rifle vice, vice president drill, that same thing I was talking about. So, you know, beep, one, two, one, two, one, two, combat, reload, one, two, one, two, one, two. My time with the, the rifle was a six, seven, four. That was also a win. Um, unusual shooting positions, that's the chair stuff. Downrange seated, downrange seated and up, shoot and move. Facing right seated, facing right seating and up, shoot and move. Facing left seating, facing left and up, shoot and move. Uh, facing rear seated, left and right response, facing rear seated and up, shoot and move, facing rear seated up to kneeling, facing rear seated up to kneeling to prone. Okay, and then we did ground drills, the handgun, so prone with handgun, supine head up, supine head up range, fire and fight up, supine head left, one hand and two hands, supine head right, one hand, two hands, so we're just talking about how, how are my positions, Su a straight supine with my feet out towards you on my back, Head right would be uh, my head's this way, my body's this way, and I'm sort of shooting from the side. And then obviously head left would be the antithesis of that. Um, prone head down range, shoot and drill, supine head down range, shoot and roll. That's where you're shooting and rolling up to a different position, standing or kneeling. And usually it's from a kneeling to a standing, depending on your flexibility. And then an entry team drill. So we set up doors and did, you know, pine off rooms and covering different corners and that kind of thing. And then we roll into reduced light, incapacitation drills, shoot and move rifle with ambient light, shoot and move rifle with handheld illumination. So how do we how do we manipulate um, a carbine with a handheld light? And there's a there's a few ways to do that. You can put depends on where your click is, a tail cap. You can push it put it here. You can hold it above the rifle. You can hold it here, which is what I tend to do. Uh, if I and, but I'm you know I have a weapon mount of light, but if I, if that was to fail, you know that's a good way to to hold a flashlight with the tail clip is bracing up against the, the front of the magazine well and you can run the tail click with your thumb. Then all this stuff can remember right hand, left handed or strong and weak handed, dominant, non-dominant, whatever you want to call it. Um, cover drill, handgun and rifle, rifle advance and withdrawal, uh, that kind of stuff. And then we roll into to day five. Day four was also the day that we did our uh, qualification course and we'll talk about that in a second. Day five Review of day four, handgun and long gun range work. We've already knocked all this stuff up. Team, patrol team entry stack drill, advance and withdrawal. We did that the day prior. Patrol team drill, um, back up, up and off duty consideration drills. We did that the days prior where we were uh, transitioning to concealed carry and that kind of stuff with and without cover garments. Um, it says qualification here, written tests. Uh, we did that once again the day prior. Um, some of the optional drills that we did, we did a figure eight drill where you're kind of rolling around barricades and then your coach is just calling out different targets right and left and that kind of stuff and you're just doing a figure eight sort of uh, moving between barricades. So, so anywhere where you are, you may have a target that's on the right or left of a barricade. You may be on the right or left of the barricade or completely in, in front of it. So you have to pop out right and left handed, that kind of stuff. We did a... Um, team stick drill and I was on the losing teams. The only thing I lost in this entire class was the stick drill and they gave me crap about it pretty hard because um, they know I'm competitive. Uh, stick drills, you just put a one by one, two one by one boards out there and each team you step up, take a shot at seven yards or ten yards, I think it was ten yards, uh, and you roll to the end and the first team to chop the stick in half between two specific points wins the drill. I was on the losing drill there. Um, uh, we did a Cadence drill, shooting while moving, we talked about that, where you're timing your shots or, and you have a certain amount of distance and time to, to hit shots on the move as you move towards and away from a target. So that's the proficiency sheet and schedule. Those are the, in general, uh, the, the, what we covered. Uh, I am not sure, and I probably should have done this before uh, I sat down in front of this video, um, but I'm not sure if I have a copy of the qualification course in front of me. I should have a copy of that, um, but I am not seeing it. It is honestly not that difficult of a qualification course. Um, I really thought I had a copy of that. It's 
probably hiding somewhere in here. Uh, I say it's not that difficult of a qualification course. You know, obviously, the um, you know the stress of 100% 100%, uh, 100% uh, hit rate to qualify can it can add stress and, and that can make something more difficult. Um, you know, there's a lot of good information in these books. You know, I, they're not just free to the public. You can't go buy them unless you're part of the law enforcement um, division, as far as I know. But if you if you are in law enforcement, you need to contact them and see if you can purchase these. I don't think they'll give you the hard copy book, but they will give you um, these CDs. And there's a lot of good training on how to build courses of fire and that kind of stuff. And I really, really, really wish that I had the qualification course in front of you so I could talk about it. Um... But that's in general um, the kind of stuff that we cover in these classes uh, and what I covered in this. The qualification course, uh, I could give you general information about it. I obviously don't have a copy of it sitting in front of me. But the qualification course is, uh, starts at 50 yards for the rifle, which for a rifle is obviously pretty short uh, range. Um, but most of these rifles are set up as CQB set up, so they don't have, not, not everybody has magnification. I didn't run man, magnification on any, any, you know, my optics. I had a Trigicon MRO on mine. And, um, you know, and you're, and you're shooting on the move. So this isn't like, you know, the military where you're laying in the prone or in a kneeling position necessarily and shooting from a hasty sling and all this stuff. This is, this is all law enforcement centric. Uh, so it's 50 yards and in on, on that. Uh, and, and everything under time and time with the shot clock and that kind of stuff. So uh, the time constraints weren't super strict, but it definitely you couldn't afford to make a mistake um, in terms of your technique because that's where your speed comes from. And obviously, as I said, it's 100% hit rate for qualification, so you couldn't afford to miss a round either uh, because then you're not qualified. You're allowed to qualify uh, three times or attempt to qualify three times uh, that third one, if you fail it, you, you don't get to try again for a year, and you've just spent a whole lot of money on this course um, for, for nothing, frankly. So um, nothing in terms of a certification. Uh, out of the seven of us, uh, three of us qualified. Me and two other guys qualified the first time around. Um, I don't think anybody failed to qualify based on the time. In fact, I think what really happened with a couple of them the first time around, they knew they were running out of time, and they pushed it and pulled around. And once you pull around, you know you've failed that qualification. You tend to pull more rounds because you know, you're not as, as focused on all these hits because, and you're kind of mad at yourself and, and you lose the bubble, so to speak. The bubble pops and you're not in the zone anymore. Uh, the second time around, um, all but one of the guys qualified on the second attempt. He came back the next morning uh, early and qualified on the fifth day and had no issues, was well under the time, perfect group. So I just, you know, one of those things, you know, he was, we all knew he was a good shooter and everybody there was a good shooter. So there was no question um, that he could or would really, it's just a, a function of doing it. Uh, I know this isn't super, super detailed. Um, it, it would turn into a very long video if I was to try to break down exactly what all these drills are for you. But this is some of the kind of stuff that that you should be training if you if you intend to use a handgun or, or a carbine in a defensive capacity because in the real world stuff happens and I think a lot of people are out there and they've got a they've got a you know some sort of carbine or rifle in their in their closet and they have a pistol in their safe or the nightstand and it's loaded and it's cleaned and well lubricated and they feel like they're ready to go and maybe 99 times out of 100 you would be but when it really hits the fan, especially those of you who are doing this in a professional capacity, it does hit the fan, and and plan A, B, and C are gonna gonna go out the window, and and, and things happen. Things happen. I mean, I mean, I, I've you've seen some of the the views or videos where I've ran the carbine pretty hard at, at outdoor ranges, shooting still and shooting and moving and and doing reloads and all that stuff. Never did I dig a hole in my hand and on the range. Um, never did my, my buffer uh, tube nut on the inside of that law tactical side folding stock adapter back out on me. Never did that screw back out of the bottom and I lose my detent. I mean, things happen. Um, stripping rounds out of a magazine, pulling from a, a magazine pouch is too tight. Th these things happen. Uh, and so you really need to push your gear hard. You need to push yourself hard because, man, that, that one double feed that happens whenever you're grabbing that gun out of your closet and you short stroke the charging handle because you're nervous and you double feed the daggum thing, 
um, and, and, and the guy, the bad guy's moving through your house, and he's about on top of you, and you are completely in no n n never never land because you've never done stripping that out and getting your fingers up in the magwell and pulling those rounds out that are jammed in there double fed and get the magazine back there and get the gun back in the fight get yourself back in the fight um you know odds are he's going to find you in your closet during the headlights looking at a gun wondering why it's not working so uh you really need to these are the kind of drills that that'll push you and your and your equipment and your weapons to the point where you find where you really have deficiencies and, and focus on those and, and these things uh, you can't see the whole screen on me, but I talk about the blue box and the red box, where you know, the blue box is understanding something uh, intellectually. The red box is having it, understanding it so well that your body's programmed um, through muscle memory, if you will, to do these things without fault. This is the kind of stuff that you really should be able to do without fault if you want to consider yourself ready for the fight. And since we can't define the fight, these are the kind of things that we may have to use in a fight. If you're an instructor, if, you, if you're walking around with one of these on your wall, not only do you need to do this perfectly in terms of presenting it to your students, but you need to be able to do it right and left-handed. Well, it's, it's, you know, we take an AR-15 uh, type rifle, you know, yeah, you put bad levers and all this kind of stuff on it, but the reality is it's not an ambidextrous weapon. And how you run this gun right-handed and left-handed, there's a different manual of arms. And if you can't tell a person, all right, here's how I shoot with an AR, I'm right-handed, now you just do all that left-handed. Well, they're going to reach up for a magazine release on this side of the weapon and not find one. Or they're going to look for a bolt hold open here. I mean, it's just, you know, weapons, very few weapons are truly ambidextrous. And so you need to be able to teach. You know, unless you're only going to teach right-handed people to carry a Glock, uh, you know, you, you, need, you need to be able to teach these principles across all platforms, right and left-handed, perfectly. Uh, and and, and that's, that means you, as the instructor, really need to get out there and acquire these skills. If you don't have them, in my opinion, you should have them before you call yourself an instructor. Uh, having them and having them perfectly, there's a, there's, a, uh, there's a huge disparity between those two ideas. So practice, 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 practice. Um, you know, I don't, not so much probably at the law enforcement level uh, or, or in, in the industry that I work in, but, you know, the guys that are out there at your local gun range that are NRA handgun instructor that they got 20 years ago, you know, I'm not begrudging the NRA standards for, for handgun instructors or any instructors on the civilian side of the house, but the reality is if you're an instructor, are you really putting in the work where somebody can just approach you on the range off the cuff and say, how would you lock your weapon to the rear left-handed if your right arm was completely out of, out of, uh, out of the fight? You got, took a round through the shoulder, this, this is just a limp noodle, and now you go from a right-handed person to a left-handed person, you got a double feed. What do I do? You know, if you're going to call yourself an instructor on that weapon system, you need to be able to pick this thing up and explain that and demonstrate it without having to go reference it in a book somewhere. So, um, <clears throat> Anyway, if you have any questions about some of the stuff that I rattled through and you want me to show you those drills specifically in detail, uh, just let me know. The, I'm, I'm sort of going to do that anyway. I'm going to systematically work through, you know, I've, I've got a handgun, shotgun, patrol rifle and tactical shooting instructor certifications on the law enforcement level. And one of the things I've considered doing is just taking these proficiency sheets and then and just working through them systematically, putting videos out there on how to do these various drills, you know, what the technique is supposed to look like and then how to train it. And so that'll be something I'll be working on, but that's a lot of stuff to cover. Where, you know, that, that would probably keep me, keep me busy for quite a long time to do those drills justice and, and demonstrate them to you and video it and edit it and all that kind of stuff. So if there's something that you want me to slide to the front of that list um, that you've heard me rattle off or anything, anything that has to do with any of the stuff we talk about on this channel, you know how to get in touch with me. Uh, send me a message. Please, please, please like, say something, comment something, anything. Just leave a comment. Uh, thumbs up the video if you like it. It takes you no time, no money. They don't charge you for doing it, but it does help me out. Um, and then subscribe to the channel if you hadn't, and click the little bell where you get notifications. I don't post a bunch of stuff up all the time. Um, there, there, is, there are six videos leading up to this class and going through it where I give a preview of the video, and then each day at the end of the day I briefly talk about that day's activities, so feel free to go back and watch that. Um, and find me on Facebook, Warrior Works Training. You know what my logo looks like. 
uh, if you found your way to this video. So uh, like that, leave me a comment there, talk to me there. It's a good place to keep in touch with me. If, if I was to ever get sniped by YouTube, which I don't think is going to happen, um, but if I was to ever get sniped by YouTube, that would be a good place to stay in contact with me. Uh, if, if you live anywhere near Birmingham, Alabama, and you want to come train with me in person, I do teach classes. Warrior Works is a, is, is a, that's what I do with Warrior Works. It's not really a YouTube channel. It's a training company. So I know there's a handful of you out there watching this right now who, who train with me regularly as paying customers, and I uh, greatly appreciate your patronage and your continued support. So without further ado, See you next time.